Hey, how's everybody doing? Welcome back to Ask That Podcast on YouTube. Still got podcasts in the title, even though there haven't been an episode in who knows how many years. And it's not even a big cast, but fuck, that's the name of the channel. I feel like changing this shit. I'm lazy. All right, what we got here is three issues from Kamiko or Comico. I, when I remember seeing it listed, and everybody I knew back then called it Comico, but I found out later on it's supposed to be Kamiko, as far as I know. What we got here is what I'm assuming, I'm pretty sure, is Elementals issue five, volume two. It says five on the cover. Sorry, I got cords I'm dealing with. Ugh. Volume two. Grendel, which I'm more than sure is volume two, because I think the first one was like a miniseries issue 20. And then Justice Machine, the Earth, GR World War 707, issue 25, which I think is the last issue of this. I wanted to do the three big series from Kamiko that everybody remembers. Actually, there's four. Justice Machine's not remembered. Elementals was kind of like their super team, their X Men. It's these four elements, of course. That's Fathom, if I'm remembering right. It's Bill Willingham. So if you enjoyed Fables, he wrote. Most of, I'm pretty sure he wrote all, of, I know he wrote all of Volume 1, most of Volume 2 of Elementals. There's a Volume 3 that I think might not have him on there completely. Grendel, of course, is Matt Wagner. His creation that's been all over the place. He's teamed up with Batman. He's, you know, he's a dark horse now. Justice Machine is basically the a, another comic that was from a different publisher that, if I remember right, the Elemental started as a backup in. Let's go through these. And what I, one thing I liked about Kamiko, and I don't know, maybe my Justice Machine, they're on new scenes. I don't remember seeing these very much outside of comic shops. And when these were coming out, this is 85, if I remember right. When these were coming out, I was not going to comic shops that much. See, Kamiko, that's why we thought it was Comico. Comico, the comic company. Gorgeous, you know, double you know, cover. Uh, now, these were as a buck fifty back in 85 for a color comic. All right, we got Bill Willingham on the plots and the pencils, Jack Herman on the script, Rich Rankin on the inks, Bob Pinaha on the letters, and Kurt Mousert on the colors. This is December of 85. And there, it was what I've read of this. I've read the whole first volume and a good chunk into the second one. I'm, I've read this issue, but it's been a while. Because I've got a good chunk of these. Matter of fact, I think besides this Grendel issue, these these elementals and this Justice Machine were found in uh, for a while there Dollar Tree. And you can find them at fan, uh, Dollar General too, but Dollar Tree is the best way to find them. It would be two to three comics, a couple of trading cards, and a cello bag. You can see, I'm sorry, it was always three. I'm sorry, it was not two to three. It was always three. Three comics. You can see the two outer comics, but not the inner one, for a dollar. If you found them at Dollar General, they're usually like three or four bucks, but they had better comics, higher higher cover cost comics. And so whatever company makes them. I think it was Cards 1. Must have got a shit pile of Kamiko overstock like when Kamiko went under. I'm sure there was a bunch of them because they did go, they did get a uh, newsstand distribution towards the end, which is where I think Justice Machine was during that era. I don't know if it did newsstands or not. It was later 80s. But LML's a good little series. Um, written on more like a teenager, young adult level instead of, you know, for kids. And when it be in a buck fifty and eighty five, you know, kids are not going to pay that for a comic. I mean, unless it's some rich kids or some kids that got their parents buying all the comics for them, I wasn't paying that. I'm like, fuck that. Nineteen eighty five, you know, I was not a child, I was a preteen, <laughs> and I'm not paying that much for a damn comic. Good little series, I would have read of it. I always had a decent mail section. Okay, and this is like, okay, what I was saying earlier was the series they were known for. Okay, I don't own any issues of Mage. They're the ones that started Mage, and they're part of the reason why I took. How many years was it between the first Mage volume and the second? Like 15? Because Kamiko went under and kind of fucked a lot of people. Okay, Robotech was the other two big ones. Robotech, I know, got new stand distribution because that's the only Kamiko comic I ever remember seeing any regularity, any place I normally went for my comics. Besides, like, if I went to the Walden's books, they would have some indie comics in there. You know, I went to a comic shop, of course, but, like, I went to, like, K&B Drugs and Food World Grocery Store and, you know, places like that. And they had a bunch of uh, Robotech uh, comics coming out, like two or three. Yeah, the Macross Saga, the Masters, and New Generation. They had three, so they're coming out almost every couple, like every three weeks. That's Mage Issue 11. That's getting near the end. The Kamiko Blimp. Talking about what's happening. It's kind of like their, it was their hype page. I was going to say it's kind of like their hype. Mage Book Volume 2 by Matt Wagner. Mage Book Volume 1 and 2. Robotech. Six issues for nine bucks. Okay, so 
neat little book. Now we got Grendel, and this is, I know this was not in there, this was in a different order. Uh, matter of fact, it might have been for Cards 1, I did a couple orders from Cards 1 of, how they label this stuff? PG-13 and up or some shit like this, like, yeah, sure, send me eight pounds of it. Parental Guidance Suggested, Grendel, issue 20. I know this is gonna be volume two. Is this a, this is another wraparound cover, okay, let's unfold it. Look at that. That's kind of a cool cover. I don't know who did that. Looks kind of like the stuff Dave McKean was doing for Sandman in the 90s. Okay. Created and written by Matt Wagner. Pencil by Hannibal King. Ink by Tim Sale. Letter by Bob Pinaha. Lies, Lies and Colors by Joe Matt. Jo oh, fucking Joe Matt from, um... Damn it. The indie book, Drawn and Quarterly, I think. I'm pretty sure it's Drawn and Quarterly. Shit. Dana Schultz, okay. 1988. And Grindel is just this neat little series. I've only ever read the original series with Hunter Rose and a tiny bit into this. Not a lot. I've got a good, so I've got a good chunk of these. Even some of the Dark Horse shit, I got a good chunk. I just have not sat down to read them because I'm missing, you know, five to six issues out of 50. And I'm like, oh, I don't want to read them. I'm missing that many. If I was missing one or two, okay, I could piece it together. But no, you yeah, know, I can't. Oh, the Rocketeer. Is this... Oh shit, Kamiko did. Yeah, that's right, Kamiko. I'm pretty sure Kamiko did. Rocketeer went all over the place. You see how little we got out of that, honestly, by Dave Stevens. There's only, what, four or five issues total. Tops, you know. But how much money he made off that when Disney made that movie that bombed horribly, but Dave Stevens lived very nice off that. And his other work, but he made a pile of money off as Adventure Magazine. Johnny Quest was the other one. I was speaking of earlier, sorry. I got. I, I lose track here. Robotech was the majors of their other big series, Robotech and then Johnny Quest. Johnny Quest and Robotech were the ones I'm pretty sure hit newsstands. And then we, they have Fish Police. Um, you know. They're a really good paper. I mean, this is like, so this is 88 and the paper's fucking sweet. I've seen comics from the 90s where the paper don't look this nice. It's yellowed already. Hey, get Rendell's layer. Okay, let's put that up here. And then the last one, this is Justice Machine. This is the last issue of this series. Like I said, it started off, I think it was called Texas Comics was the company. They put out Justice Machine. They were supposed to, don't know if they ever did, put out like the Futurians by Chris Claremont. Is that the Chris? Or is it Star Slammers? I always get Futurians and Star Slammers mixed up. One's Walt Simonson, one's Chris Claremont. Pretty sure Futurians are Chris Claremont and Star Slammers are Walt Simonson. Whatever one's Chris Claremont, they're supposed to put that out. They're supposed to put out Evangeline, not the Rob Liefeld angel bullshit, but the killer nun theme by Chuck Dixon and what Judith Hunt, I think was the other creator on that. And they did Justin Sheen and a few little things. First Prince of Elementals, then boom. They go under, ooh, this cover, is that cover? Ooh, that cover's separating back. So my last issue of Justice Machine by Doug Murray. Okay, so we got Doug Murray writer, Michael Gustavich as a penciler creator, Del Barris as anchor, Michael Uri as editor, Ken Fedenuskis as a colorist, and Bob Pini, huh? was a letter. Another one where I've never read an issue of this. It looks cool, good art, good color. I mean, really, the colors really pop. Never read it. And that's the last issue of the series, so I don't want to read, start with this, you know. I don't want to start the very fucking end. And while we're, this is getting near the end of Kamiko. Now, we're in 27. May's age, I forgot that. Oh, Troll Lords. I don't know if I ever had any Troll Lords issues from Kamiko. I thought my own was from a different company. Some Robotex, Sam and Max Relance Police, Ribbit and Elemental Specialist. They ain't even got a monthly Elemental, a regular Elemental Trouble with Girls. Hey there. This is... Early 89, I don't think they, they, um, they did last like 92, 93, 94, 95. Somewhere in the mid, early to mid 90s, they went away, but they were not putting anything out on any kind of like regular schedule by then. Oh, shit, sorry. I know this artwork is so stimulating. It's just all oh, so stimulating. Uh, and Justice Machine 26. Okay, well, there's an issue after this, I guess. Okay, I thought it was the last issue. 
Join us this winter as creator Bill Willingham puts his critically acclaimed team through some major changes. First, in January, make sure to pick up a copy of Elemental Special Number 2. It's written entirely and illustrated by Bill Willingham himself. It picks up the storyline from issue 22 of the original series featuring Jeremy Skaggs and its unholy rapture. And make sure you're around when we begin an all-new Elemental series. Elementals Number 1 is due out in March. We'll pick up where the Elemental Special Number 2 story leaves off. As creator, writer, Bill Willingham welcomes the all-new art team of penciler Mike Leakey and Inker... Mike Chen, both from Robotech, the Macross Saga, to this monthly series. And I'll be honest, I don't think it was ever monthly. Okay, that's kind of cool. Okay, that's the front cover. I don't think Elmo's was ever monthly for very long. They were looking at something, you know, it's a decent cover. Kind of nondescript heroes, but then on the back, you can see what they're looking at. And so, I said three things from Elmo's. I do own some Johnny Quest. I do own some Robotech. I just, I couldn't find them. So, anybody else out, out there remember Kamiko? If you do, leave a comment. Tell me what you remember about them. Anyway, if you enjoyed the video, leave me a thumbs up. Leave a comment, of course. Subscribe, all the other bullshit. Talk to everybody later. Bye-bye.